Hiya, it's Hannah the Artisan Duck and I'm back today with this really cute and quite easy brick stitch flower tutorial. I've gone a little bit further and made them into some really cute earrings, so let's get beading. Alright, I've got all my supplies ready off to the side here. So I've got Delicus in size 11 in this opaque light blue, opaque navy and silver lined. And I've already got my beading needle on my thread and for that I'm using Wildfire because it's my absolute favourite. I have also made myself this little pattern for me to follow. This is going to be on my blog so you can click through and um, find that if you want and I will put the link for that sort of in the description and this is just the pattern that I'm following today it's um, really simple and obviously you can change up the colours any which way you want I'm going to start this brick stitch slightly different to normal instead of starting at the bottom and then having to add extra beads as we go up it's just easier to start right in the middle so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start off by picking up all these beads in the middle and we'll build each half as we go along Right, so I've just moved my beads off to the side because my camera tries to focus on those and not what I'm doing. Just to begin that middle row, the very end of both ends, so it doesn't matter which way you're working from at the minute, is two dark blue beads like that. So I'm just going to pick the two beads up and bring this back in. That is these two here. And I'm going to take those down until they get to the middle of my thread. So we want equal amounts of thread left on each side with these beads exactly in the middle. Just give me a second while I do that. I don't think I can do that in camera. You're not going to be able to see. But that's roughly halfway. And I'm just going to hold that first bead down there. And I'm going to take my needle. Always really hard to get it to focus when I'm just starting off because there's so little to focus on I'm taking my needle up through that bead again so it's going to sort of form a loop with the thread and then those two beads are going to sit side by side if they'll behave and let me show you like that there so the next bead along is also another navy blue bead so I'm just going to keep that in my hand like that pick up one more blue bead and the thread is exiting out of this bead here and we're going to take the needle back up into that thread sorry that loop sitting near the camera is annoying me it's annoying me it's probably annoying you so we're just going to go back up there like that so this bead second bead is now going to become the middle bead and we're going to pull the needle through and when we do that we'll have three beads all sitting in a row I've managed to loop that through somehow there we go so now I've got three beads sitting in a row there I'm hoping it's clear enough to see and both threads are exiting out that middle bead so because we need to now continue working along we're going to take the needle back through this outer edge like that and then because we're now ready to pick up another bead we're going to move on to the next one which is a clear this is the, the center point of the flower so use whatever color you want for the middle of your flower and I'm going in through the top of that blue bead so that when I pull through the thread will form a loop and it will force that silver lined bead to sit alongside when it behaves the blue bead like that and I'm just now going to carry on working along I've got three more blue beads to add so take the needle up into the silver lined and pull through like that and we're ready now to keep adding so I'm gonna oh that's a skinny little bead we need to sort of slightly bigger than that so we're gonna pick up one more bead like that so pick up one more bead I'm gonna go so exiting out the top here we're gonna go in through the bottom of that bead there and I know my beads look a bit loose for a minute we can go through and tighten those up in a minute but now we've added that blue and then we're going to go 
out down through this blue again so that we're ready to add on like that and pick up another blue back through the top of the navy there on the end and loop through there we go so we see we're like forming like a little chain link as we go across and then we're just going to move our needle back through the end again like that pick up one more bead like so and back up so we're coming out the top here I'm going to go through the bottom there and that is our first row of beading so we need to now build on top so we need to be exiting out of this bead so I'm just going to take that needle into there and we're now exiting out the top of that bead and I'm going to just spend two minutes tightening up this thread um, so that we're ready to move on to the next row right so those threads are tight I just did it by basically pulling these threads and trying to pull the beads around I'm just going to take this tail thread here is exiting out the middle well not the middle but it's the second bead in here and we need this to be exiting out this end for when we do the other half also both threads are coming inwards towards the same half which is obviously not where we need them to be so without a needle because my wildfire is quite um, it doesn't fray or anything I'm just going to take it through that bead so it's looping over the top and I'm just going to pull that through to the other side that's out of the way and will be used when we get to do the beading on the other side like that so we've got opposite ends now one out the top one out the bottom so the next row of beading is this one up here and we're increasing the stitch so we're going to pick up two beads to begin with and for my pattern here we've got one navy and then one light blue so I'm going to go ahead and get my beads ready and we'll start that row right so to start the next row and increase we're going to pick up one navy first and then one light blue bead and we're going to take the needle this is always tricky to show into this thread that's going between these two beads here so it's like I call them bridging threads so they're it's holding these two beads together we're going to pull that through like so you can always just pull this thread that's coming up if your beading uh, the beadwork gets starts to get loose we're going to pull it through make sure the beads are sitting where they need to be and then we're going to take the needle again up through the light blue like that and pull and when we tighten that thread those beads will sit on top of the ones in the row below just like that so I now need to finish this row so the next bead along you just pick up one bead this time because we're now just working one at a time and it's a, a light blue so again just take the needle into the threads that are going between the two beads so that's the thread going across the top like that pull it through and then we're going to go back up through that blue bead like that and pull to tighten and now We've added the third bead in that row. So I'm just going to carry on until I reach sort of the end here. And I need to add two more dark blues and two more light blues. So I shall just quickly do that. Um, I'll try not to disappear on you. It's not too long a project that I think I'll need to fast forward too much. Um, but it might mean there's some silences whilst I sit here quietly beading. Because I can't seem to bead and talk at the same time easily obviously try to stop hitting the camera as well so there's one 
there's my other blue bead. Oops. I'm looking through a camera trying to do this and it's um, like trying to do something backwards sometimes. It doesn't always look like the direction you're trying to go in. Um, that's just possibly me. I've also just put cream on my hands so my hands are slippy. Wish I'd remember not to do that before trying to do these projects. And pull. And then I'm just going to add my two lighter beads. Obviously one at a time. So there's one. And there's quite a th few threads going over some of these beads because obviously the way we added them. Um, so if you've got two threads going across the top of one bead you can always just um, use the one thread on that bridging bead. You don't have to use both of them if you don't want to or it's too tight to put your thread under. Right, that's one. One more blue. Light blue that is. Because otherwise they're pretty much all blue. I'm going to go under that thread there. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. Like that. And pull that through. Uh, that's a bit loose because that's coming off here there so I'm just going to have to hold. And you could put a stopper bead on there if you wanted to. I'm just going to hold it tight because once we work our way through the beading it'll start to do sit as it's supposed to. So I'm going to pull up there and I'll just make sure I pull down there as well on my tail thread. There we go. So those beads are all sitting nicely and we've run out of the bridging thread here. So the last bead is added slightly differently like that. So there's the one blue bead and we're going to take the needle under, this is going to be tricky to show, I should have chosen a white thread against these dark beads I think. There's threads going up between those two beads so we'll, um, we're just going to take the needle under there and that will be the anchor point to hold this thread in place and then we go back up through this blue, dark blue that is, like that and just make sure it's all tightened and there we go we've added our second row of beading so I'll just bring in my pattern again. We're working our way up now to this row and we're not increasing, we're decreasing. So we, we've got basically alternate dark blue and light blue beads. So I shall get those beads ready. Right, so I've just picked up my one dark blue bead to start the row and I'm just going to take the needle as before into that thread that's going over the top and between those beads. You can see them quite clearly, those threads on these uh, light blue here. So I'm just going to take that under and I'm going to go back up the bead, not loop the thread around the beadwork and then pull it tight like that and then the next one is a light blue Like that. I love break stitch because once you've got the pattern and you've got the hang of the stitch, um, you can just sit and work these pieces up quite quickly. I'm already thinking about making more of these earrings. Uh, definitely a pair for myself um, because I really love how they turned out. And then I'm going to, so I picked up another dark blue. And we're just going to add that one. Pull through. And that. And then we're going to go for the light bead. And take our needle under those bridging threads.
that. The next bead's a dark blue. And straight into that bridging thread. The wildfire um, beading thread that I'm using is quite a lot stiffer than some other beading threads. So, it, you know, once you sort of pulled it tight, it tends to really hold its shape. So that's sometimes why uh, my beading is a little bit tight when I'm trying to get onto those bridging threads. It's just that the um, thread is pulled quite tight and there's not much given it. But it does mean that what your finished pieces aren't soft. You can It sort of holds its own shape, which I personally like. It doesn't means I don't tend to need to reinforce it um, too much or anything like that. This is the second to last in this row, which is a light blue. And then I'm going to add the last bead, which is a dark blue. And because we still have bridging threads remaining, because it's not increasing at all, I can just go ahead and use the um, bridging thread like normal. Oops. And take the needle back up that blue just to secure it in place. Like that. And there's our third row. So our fourth row now, we're moving up to here. And we've got two dark blue, two light blue and two dark blue. And we're decreasing again. So again, just as we did before, you pick up the one bead to begin with. Right, so I've just got my blue bead on my needle and um, we're going to go straight into that bridging thread there and pull through like that. We're going to pick up another dark blue bead. This will finish off our first flower petal. through the top and then we're going to work onto our two light blue beads so I've picked that one up already and I'm going to take the needle my hands are slippy honestly I really should remember not to put hand cream on before I do these jobs so into that bridging thread there and back up And the second of those light blue beads. And then just to finish that row are the two dark blue. So I've picked one up. And into those threads there and pull. Oops. And I've got my last bead now, and because we're not increasing, we can just go ahead and use that last bridging thread there for that row. Like that. So that's so we've got two completed flower petals and we just need to add the top row. So the top row is just these three dark blue beads but we're not going directly up. So if we just picked up one bead now and used this bridging thread we'd actually fill in this gap here which is not what we need to do. We just need to cover the top of that petal. So I'm going to show you how I turn around so that we're exiting out of the right way to add those three blue beads. So to turn around, I'm going to take my needle. We're exiting out the top here. Um, we're going to take my needle into the next blue bead along and down. And this is the bead that we really need to be exiting out of, but 
up from the other direction. So we now need to take the needle and we're going to go between, I'll do it in a minute, but we're going to go between these two beads and just literally take it through the middle because if you remember there's a bridging thread over the top holding those two beads together. So if you go underneath that bridging thread out to the other side, that is then the equivalent of passing this thread underneath, if that makes sense. So let's see if I can show you what I mean, but I'm not sure I can. So the threads are going up and between those beads and there's just a tiny gap in the middle there. You can see a little bit of like daylight through it. That's what we're heading for. So I'm just going to take my needle and push it through there. Um, you might need pliers if your beads are particularly tight or your hands are slipping like mine. But there we go. I'm just going to take it through like that. And then we're going to loop up from the other side, like that, into that second bead in, and pull. And that thread now is trapped under those th other threads underneath, and we're ready to carry on our beading. So I'm just going to pick up one. Um, dark blue bead and we're going to go straight into that bridging thread, pull and we're going to loop up again like so, add a second bead into those threads and back up the top And then I've got my third bead for my flower and we're just going to go through that last bridging thread. Well no, not the last, second to last bridging thread, but that's the last one we need in this row. And we'll secure it in place by going back up through the last bead there. So now we're exiting out the top and I want to make mine into earrings so I'm going to add a little beaded loop at the top there so that I can hang it from my earring posts. So I've got some, um, I need five, one, two, three, four, five. I've got some silver lined seed beads there and that's how I'm going to add my loop. So we're just going to go ahead and pick those up on my needle. like that and I'm going to sort of jump over these beads and go straight into the needle the sorry the bead right on the other end so that when we pull it through we've made a loop like that and I'm basically going to work my way along and back up and through that loop again um, because I want to reinforce this as much as possible so I'm just going to take my thread down the beadwork like that um, and I'm going to just like we did before go under the threads that are sort of bridging this bead here if that makes any sense I'm not sure I made that very clear so between these two beads this light blue and this dark blue, they'll obviously be threads. I'm going to take the needle under there so that I can trap my thread under that other bridging thread. Does that make any sense? Am I making any sense? I hope so. So I've just literally stabbed it between those beads and usually the threads are being captured inside the bead anyway so it will work out and then I'm going to go back up through the light blue I'm going to go back up through the dark blue that's down here 
so I'm not making any new bead paths if that makes sense I'm just going on the next available bead I can and that now means I can go back through all my seed beads and that just reinforces that beaded loop for me and I'm going to go straight down into that blue bead as well because obviously we need this thread now going back into the main beadwork so that's the first top half and all I'm going to do now is take my beading needle off I'll come back in a bit and tie the knots and we're going to put the new beading needle onto our uh, sort of really long tail thread that we have here right so I'm now using this tail thread that's my thread that I've just done that loop with and we're just going to do the, the mirror image now so I've got my beads ready we are increasing our row because we're going to copy this second row in here so we're going to pick up the dark blue bead and the light blue bead to begin with and we're going to take our needle under the bridging thread between those two dark blue beads and push through first bead might need a bit of a wiggle to get it where it needs to be but there we go and then we're going to take the needle back up through the light blue bead like that trying to make sure we don't capture that tail thread and pull and there we go we've started that next row so we're going to go ahead and add another light blue Just going to take it under the bridging thread there and this is one of the occasions we've got multiple bridging threads there from the other work that we've already done I've just picked one and gone with it I'm going to pull that through but it does mean that the beading is tighter and um, we're going to take our needle back up through the top more fingers and thumbs today honestly I'm not entirely sure why and then I've got two more dark blues to add, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There's one. I'm going to go under that bridging thread. And back up. And we get another dark blue. Under that bridging thread. I think that one's got multiple threads as well, so I'm just going to pick one and go with it. I'm going to go back up. And then we're going to need two more light blues. I didn't get myself enough beads, so pick up one more I'm going to go into that bridging thread back up through the top and our last light blue in this row And through the bridging thread on the end. Again, I'm just going to pick one. And now we've run out of bridging threads, so we pick up our final bead in the row and we're going to take it a little more focus sort of between there and we're going to bring it so it's trapped under those threads that are going between those beads there and pull I say if you just loosen that bead work when you're pulling that through just pull the thread coming out the bead and it'll tighten it all up for you Pull your bead through 
and then back out the top of your bead to secure it in place. There we go, there's our um, new row finished. So we're going to move on to the next row which is just four dark blue beads alternating with three mid blue beads. So I'm just going to pick up my first bead. The row is decreasing, not increasing, so we just pick up the one bead to begin with. I've got that on my needle. And we're going to use the bridging thread between the two beads and just start our new row like we have every other time. And this bit is identical to the other half, as you may have imagined, until we get, if you want to add it, the sort of little detail at the bottom of the earrings that I've chosen to put on. Um, so that's just my light blue bead. That. So we're on to a dark blue bead next. I'll just pick that one up. I'm going to go between those bridging threads. And these threads aren't so tight here now because uh, these beads have only been gone through once. Pull that through. The next one is a light bead, a light blue. I'm just going to add that. Like that. Next one along is a dark blue. So just got that there. And then And back up to secure it in place. And we need another light blue. I'm just going to go into that bridging thread there. Does anyone else's needles get sort of completely um, bent and <laughs> mine end up in really funny shapes? Once they get so bad, I uh, stop using them. But I do keep using them, some of them, but just not for tutorials because some of them are so doubled over virtually, but I'm absolutely adamant that until I absolutely snap it, I'm going to keep using it um, because it really annoys me how quickly I get through them otherwise. And the last bead is a dark blue. So that's there. And we're just going to go into the final bridging threads there. No need to add it on the end like we did before because we're not increasing the row like that. I love it when it's nice and easy and it just sits as it's supposed to. There we go and we are now ready to move on to the next row which is two dark blue, two light blue and then another two dark blue. So I should just get my beads ready. Right, so I've got my first dark blue bead and this row is not increasing either. So I'm just going to turn it around so it's easier for me to hold that way. We're just going to take our needle under those bridging threads like that and pull through. And then we take the needle back up through that blue bead to get it to sit into position. And then another dark blue. And to the bridging thread there. And back up. A light blue. I'm never very sure how much detail to show these in. I don't want people getting annoyed that I don't show enough detail. But I'm aware that not everyone wants to sit and watch me bead for like a really long time. Unless you're beading along with me. So if you want to let me know what kind of tutorials you like. Whether you like me to show virtually every stitch. Or whether some fast forward sections are okay. Uh, please just like put it in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to know. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, um, I just carry on doing what I think is right. Um, 
but yeah it'd be great to have some feedback if anyone has anything they'd like to say on that matter or anything else for the, that matter so we just got the two more dark blue beads to add there so I'm going to add one if I can do it there we go I'm going to go back up through that bead I did try this pattern using just regular round seed beads it just I've, some of my um, brick stitch patterns work well with that with regular seed beads but um, I just couldn't get this to work so I stuck to the delicas for this this is my last in the row so just add that one on quickly like that Oops. and then we finished off the second to last row so that's that one here we now need to do the three dark seed beads just across the top middle across those light blue beads so we're just going to do that little turn with our thread again to put ourselves in the right position so we're exiting out this end blue bead here we're going to take a needle down no beads just straight down into that second blue bead dark blue bead in and then I'm going to take my needle and push it between this light blue and this dark blue so that we can trap it underneath those threads. Alright, there we go. I've got my needle between those beads. I'm just going to put it through. And then we're coming back up through that navy blue bead again. Like so. And we are now ready to pick up our remaining three dark blue beads. So I shall just get those beads into position. There we go. And we just need to pick up one blue bead to start with. And if it will focus. I'm just going to take my needle into those bridging threads between that dark blue and that light blue bead there. There we go, that's one. Need another one. There's the second bead. I'm going to go back up. I wish my camera would just stay focused. Honestly, there we go. And I wish I'd stop hitting it as well. There we go, there's that one. And then we're going to pick up the last one. There we go there's your basic flower now you could just stop at that point you don't have to do anything else it was just me feeling a little bit extra so I'm just going to show you how I added this little drop here just to make it a little bit more fancy so the first thing I'm going to do is to continue the brick stitch and just add two more dark blue beads on these two bridging threads so I've just got one blue bead there, dark blue bead and I'm just going to go on that bridging thread as normal back up to secure it, that's my tail thread just move that out of the way and we're going to add a second one this just helps to taper in to that point towards the little drop faceted bead that I've done. I'm going to go back up through that bead to secure it in place. 
So there's our brick stitch finished. So I'm going to pick up one Delica dark blue. I've got one, um, I think this is five millimeter faceted bead. And I've got another silver lined Delica there on my needle. So just take them through like that. And then we're going to come back up. So miss the Delica out, this silver lined Delica. We're going to go straight back up through the faceted and back up through that dark blue bead there that we added. And that um, silver lined Delica is going to hold it in place. Then we are exiting, I'm trying to help. So we're exiting out of that Delica there. We're going to take our needle into the next one along on the end here, like so. I don't know why I'm struggling, it's not even tight. There we go. And then if you pull it, it just adds that little bit on and you can wiggle them if you just need to even up the tension on those threads at all. But that basically is how you add that little beaded drop. So all you've got left to do is knot off both your threads and add your earring hook of choice. Um, of course you can use this in any which way you want but that's how I'm using it is in earrings. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to knot these threads. Um, I might just swing back in a minute and show you how I do that but yeah so that's pretty much it. Right so I've knotted this side completely this thread and I've um, just left it in place and I've swapped my needle around and put it on my other tail thread. I've worked my way down so I'm on the outer edge of my beading so I can show you how I tie my knots. So we're exiting out of here we're just going to here being this blue bead here we're just going to take the needle under the threads that are going between those beads again and pull that through until we've got just a little loop like that. Hook the needle underneath it and pull. Pull that tight and then just take your needle up into the next bead along and pull and that knot will disappear inside the beadwork and be pretty much invisible. So I do this a few times around the earrings. Now these are obviously shouldn't come into too much tugging and pulling so a couple of knots on each side like three maybe something like that maybe slightly more if you're extra cautious will be fine and then you cut off the ends and we can add our earring hook. Right, so I've just used a jump ring to attach the beaded loop onto my earring uh, finding here and I found these in my stash and I just thought they looked so fun with the silver lined beads and really bought them out. So yeah, feeling a bit extra today and gone with a bit of a glitzy one. But you could easily just use this be little beaded loop and hook that straight onto a like a fish hook type earring. But yeah, there's your finished flower earrings. I think they're super cute. I think these are mine because I really like them. Um, but I might make some more for my Etsy shop. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll put the links below for anything, uh, sort of the PDF of that pattern and all that kind of stuff. But thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.